I've been given my fair share of challenges on The Wine Show. For once, though, I've been set a task that couldn't be more at my street. This is the wine challenge I was born for. I am going to try and persuade somebody who is not a wine person that they would like to be a wine person. Wine challenges do not get much better than this. Can I get a glass of wine that tastes something like Sprite? Gina Yashiri is an award-winning <laughs> British comic who lives and works in the USA. It smells like wine. <laughs> <laughs> I've arranged to meet her at a place I've been longing to visit, the iconic hitching post in Santa Barbara. I reckon I'm going to be Joe's most difficult customer for sure. Like, yeah, because I, I know nothing about wine. I'm just like, eh, never liked it, don't care. So, yeah, I'm going to be a hard one to please. Gina. Hey, Joe. Hello. <laughs> Oh, this is brilliant. I know this is something of a pilgrimage for me coming oh, here. Really? Oh, it is. This is not just a diner. This is the home of Sideways, the film. Oh, it's right. about two people having a road trip out of LA up into this part of wine country, and they come here, and this is quite a sort of central part oh, right. of the whole okay. um, performance. And critically, yes. one of the big things is this thing they love, Pinot Noir. And Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir. I don't know if I've ever had that. You've never had Pinot Noir? I don't know. I might have done... Who Probably not. I'm not a wine person at all. I How? Know. How so? How can you not be? I've never been a drinker. Never really liked the taste of alcohol. I'm, I've got a sweet tooth. I like sweet, fizzy things. <laughs> Soft drinks. Juices. I love a good juice. I've even got a brown paper bag. I can just... <laughs> 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 now, you do have something here. What's this? Bubbles. Do you like that? Do you like it? It's all right, actually. It's got a weird kind of aftertaste. I'm like... I'm, um, not, so, I'm not so keen on them. after. Okay. I like the sparkly and the fizzy and the cold and sweet. I think my palate is very basic. Don't. It's ice Sugar and chocolate, that's my palate. I think already, from what I know, you will have an amazing palate. What? And we have to treat it delicately and deftly, because you are a delicate wallflower of a kind of person. <laughs> <laughs> you have a, a delicate, very delicate palate. I've never been palette. described as a delicate wallflower joke. <laughs> Right, should we go? Well, I've got one thing to tell you. You're a wine expert, yeah. and you're a pretty humorous and funny guy. So what I've done, I've got a surprise for you. I've set you up a comedy gig <laughs> no. in Hollywood. <laughs> no, tell me you haven't, seriously. A live comedy gig? You're going to do stand-up about wine in Hollywood. No. I'm going to show you the ropes. I'm going to help you. <laughs> <laughs> this right. is going to be great. Come on, then. All right. Now that you've delivered that bombshell. Let's do it. It's going to be fun. You're going to look You're after gonna me, aren't it. you? You're going to love it. I'll give you a massage. Honestly, I was really, was really into this, and now suddenly it's become uh, very much outside my comfort zone. I'm, I'm not a funny man by a long stretch. All right, this is going to be great, Joe. I've got a good feeling. Really? Look, it's going to be a successful couple of days. I'm going to be a wine connoisseur, and you're going to be a wine comedian. Basking on the shores of the Pacific, after Napa, Santa Barbara is America's most important wine region and is home to more than 115 producers. Road trip, road trip, oh, oh, oh. road trip. Wine comedy is going to be my thing, is it? Um, yeah, you're going to talk about wine, you're going to talk about yourself. It's going to be a hoot. I know a joke about a halibut. There's a, a man walks into a restaurant mm -hmm. and orders some food. He, he says, I'm having the halibut. The wine waiter comes and he says, would you like some wine with that? And uh, he goes, yes, yes, what would you recommend? And the wine waiter said, ooh, I'd have a, um, I'd have a mac on with that. He said, why, is it a good match for halibut? And he says, no, I've seen you, you're a messy eater. Right, we'll work on that one. Well, I thought it was funny. Anyway, back to my wine challenge and to a very important part of Gina's anatomy I need to explore, her tongue. And strange as it may sound, the best way to do that is by tasting coffee. This is the famous coffee test, where okay. we can learn a lot about your palate. The human tongue will have between two and 8,000 taste buds. Okay. So some people are four times more sensitive to taste than other people. Now, would you like an espresso? Like this. <laughs> Am I supposed to swirl it? No, you don't need to swirl the coffee. <laughs> I'll see if I can just have a try. What does it do for you? Oh, God, that's <laughs> gross. It's bitter. It's sour. Right. Yeah, gross. Try a, a cappuccino. It's better than that. Latte's even more milk, even less coffee. 
More milk, less coffee. Less coffee. Still not quite there. Still don't like it. Right, mocha latte. So what do you think to that? Definitely the best of the four. This would be way better though. If, if it you was... took out the coffee. Exactly. Yes. If it was just chocolate. Brilliant. Yeah. Now I know exactly what your palate's like. You have lots of taste buds. So it's like somebody's turned the volume right up. So if somebody puts loud music on, it's overwhelming. It's sort of massive. You need a nice quiet flavour to go with the fact that your volume's turned right up because you're very, very sensitive. That's why you have an amazing palate. You have a ph phenomenal palate. You are very special. I don't know, five, maybe 10% of the population. I'm in the top 5%. You're in the top 5% of tasters. Of the population. So that means that much of the world's wines, we really aren't gonna get very far with you <laughs> at all. <laughs> I can't believe it, I'm top 5%. I just thought I had a sweet tooth. But according to Joe, I'm a genius of tasters, basically. Well, I don't think you're going to find you're going to be 5% of the top comedians in the world, <laughs> but if I can get you to the top 70, I, I think I can do that. This, I thought this was quite funny. I was the wine writer for the Herald newspaper in, okay. uh, in, in Scotland, in the west coast of Scotland, and my job was uh, to try and persuade Glaswegians that they might like to have a drink on a Saturday. <laughs> That's pretty good. It's getting better. That's not bad. Yes. So as a hypersensitive taster, I have my doubts that a red wine is going to suit Gina. Here is our wine ring. Ooh. But a delicate Pinot Noir is worth a try. I don't think it's sweet enough for me. Okay. I think I need more fruity. I don't like the dryness. The astringency. Yeah, I don't like the astringency. Right. Yeah, just as I thought, we need to focus on softer, fruitier wines. So we're off to downtown Santa Barbara to try some popular white varieties, starting with a Sauvignon Blanc. Do you like that? It's quite fruity. There are particular fruits, gooseberries. Goose? I don't know what gooseberries smell like. <laughs> no idea. Right, have a taste, come on. That's uh, it. It's got that little bit of tartness. Would you like it to be a little bit more... Sugary. Do you have a Pinot Grigio? Pinot Grigio? Because I'm just thinking that this might taste a little bit softer and gentle, which could be your sort of palate thing. So this is a Pinot Grigio 2015. That is definitely nearer. This it's is getting definitely better. nearer. Mmm. I like that better Good. than that one. So I think you like this slightly softer, gentler acidity in the wine, and it lets more of the fruity juiciness come through. Now we need to just refine this. Obviously, this is a two-way street. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Hello, guys, guys, no, in no. the store. Hi. Oh, hi. He's going to do some stand-up tomorrow about wine, and I want him to test out a couple of the jokes. Ladies and gentlemen, all the way from London, via the wine show, I give you Joe Fattorini! Yeah! Thank you very Yay! much indeed. Thank you, my name is Joe. I'm from England. I present a TV show about wine. You know what, this is not my first job. I did other things before that. Um, I used to work in the United States. I worked for the US PGA Tour. You know the US PGA Tour? My job every week was to go around and persuade middle-class white dudes who've just played a round of golf that they might quite like to have a drink. I can see the gentleman just there, he's, he's writing that down. We'll work on some of those gags. I was not right. watching carefully. Thank you very much. Excellent, excellent. Oh, this is very hard being a comedian. If the audience just decide they don't like you, you're screwed. You've got to get that first laugh foot in the, within the first 30 seconds, straight to the punchline, boom, 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 smash, and you'll be fine. Oh. After an evening practicing gags for my big gig, today is Judgment Day. But before what could be my slow death on stage, there's still the small matter of finding a wine for comedian Gina Yashiri. <laughs> so I've come to Santa Barbara's wine quarter, the Funk Zone. I've got a very specific brief mm -hmm. for a very particular sort of palette. I'm looking for something that is plush and fruity, mm -hmm. quite soft. Low acidity, which is your softest, roundest red. I love it. I'm just yes. wondering whether my friend would love it. I was wondering about Grenache Blanc. I think I am getting a bit warmer here. 
I think that's the one that's closest to where Gina is going to be. Can I get a Grenache Blanc? Thank you very much Thank indeed. Thank you very much. Brilliant. See you again. <laughs> Enjoy. Thank you. Just really fruity is what we're after. This is a blend of seven different grapes. It's <laughs> really ripe. Yeah. OK, I like that. I really like it. I'm just wondering whether she will. Have you got another rosé? It's a Zinfandel and Grenache Blanc. It's called Debra. That is delicious. Hit me up with a Debra. All right. Is that for me? Yep, that's for you. Awesome. See Thank you again. You so much, yep. I've got my shopping. As a super taster, Gina's palate is highly sensitive to bold flavours and textures, so I've chosen three softer wines. A Grenache Blanc, a Zinfandel and Grenache Blanc blush, and a half-dry Riesling. I'm convinced that one of these will awaken the inner wine lover in Gina. If not, I could well end up as the butt of one of her jokes. Let's have it! Let's have it! I could crush your career right now. <laughs> yes, that very easily. Me... We're tasting the wines at Stern's Wharf, overlooking the Pacific. So if Gina doesn't like any of the wines I've chosen, at least I can dive for cover. <laughs> right. I'm going to start off with this. This is a Grenache Blanc. I can smell it already, actually. Can you? It smells nice. Good. Excellent. We're on the right track, then. Go on, have a taste. You do this. <laughs> Good. First impressions. It's, um, it's quite strong on the back of the throat, but it's quite sweet. I like the sweet. It's fruity. Yeah. It doesn't leave a horrible lack on my tongue, which I like a lot. Good. We've started strongly, I yeah, think. Yeah, that's pretty good, Jack. But I don't think that's going to be the one you really like. OK. California is very famous for these blush wines, okay. particularly made from Zinfandel. So have a go. This is Deborah. I do like the colour. Definitely feels, smells like deeper fruit than that. You can have a go. Your face is a picture, don't Hmm. I did like that one, but now I'm like, actually, no, this one's a bit better. Yes. Yes. I like the extra sweetness and fruitiness in this one. It doesn't leave that horrible on my tongue, which I like a lot. It's nice, I like it. <laughs> right, having understood about where you are with uh, texture and flavour and ripeness and then fruitiness and the best bits out of red, I think this is where we go. This is a Riesling growing in the hills here. So have a try of that doesn't smell as strong. Mm. Which I think, given your hypersensitive palate, is not a terrible thing, because I don't yeah. want to overwhelm your, all those probably 8,000 taste buds that you have. OK. Here okay. we go. This is the moment. In for a penny. Right, be honest. Well, Joe. <sighs> I like this one. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. This is my favourite. Even though it's white, mm -hmm. it's still got a nice, strong flavour. Mm -hmm. Still nice and sweet. Same texture, which is good. It didn't leave an aftertaste. This is good. Huge relief. That is good. Obviously. I'm impressed, Joe. Obviously, don't be too relieved, because obviously you're doing stand-up tonight. <laughs> mm. Yes. With Gina's words ringing in my ears, we take to the Pacific Highway, bound for Hollywood. Tonight, I make my debut in the most cutthroat business there is. All right, you ready? Let's start going through these jokes. OK. What's your opening? Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Joe, and I'm from England. Um, I... I'm not even Joe, I'm from England. I was lucky enough to receive one of the finest educations at... Um... I'm getting very concerned now, Joe. Oh. All right, so, from the top. Hello, my name's Joe, and I'm from England. I've got faith in you, Joe. I have faith in you, man. Calm down. Let's do it. Oh, 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 oh. oh that's excellent. The space is right here. OK. Oh, I'm not OK. No! <laughs> Your name's in lights, Joe! My name you're, is in lights. You're the headliner, man! Let me lead you <laughs> to your destiny, Joe. This is your destiny. Oh. <laughs> I 
All right, Joe, this is it. Your moment has come. I'm going to go and drink a, a glass of Riesel. OK. You're on your own now. I'm on my own. <laughs> Enjoy. I'm going to go and will okay. sit and watch the show. to bring up your first comedian of the night, guys, all the way from London. It's actually his first time ever on stage. So make a lot of noise. Start clapping right now for Joe Farina. Hello, my name's Joe. I'm from England. Um, I used to work for the US PGA Tour. You know the golf tour? I used to travel around the United States. It was an amazingly challenging job. I can't tell you how difficult this was to try and persuade rich old white dudes that after a game of golf, they maybe would like to go and have a drink. <laughs> now, I'm talking about uh, American golfers. It's been a bad week for Trump. This is absolutely true. Uh, this week in a very big wine tasting competition in London, Trump wines came last. Although I think we will soon discover that this is fake news. They actually come from the greatest winery ever in the history of humanity. No one's ever made wine like this. Really, they're tremendous, tremendous wines. Um, you know what? I'm very comfortable coming here to, to LA. I travel all around the world, but you know, I'm arriving here the home of Bill Clinton. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. I'm Joe Fatterman from The Wine Show. That was utterly terrifying. <laughs> he did great. He did great. Look at this. You ain't got a new career yet, but no. he did great. He did great. Uh, the last couple of days has been fantastic. It's been an eye opener for me. I've learned a lot. I've discovered stuff about myself. Top 5%. I know I've said it about 27 times, but I'm going to say it again. Top 5% of tasters in the world. Uh, I've discovered I actually have a wine that I like, and there may be more. So I'm looking forward to testing out my newly discovered palette. And Joe's great, and I've got him to do something he's never done before, so it's been fantastic. I'm doing that again. Do I'm doing that again. That was amazing. <laughs> uh oh, right. I've created a monster. <laughs> Am I allowed a drink? That was great. Let's go and have a wine. Yeah, we should go and have a Let's wine. Let's go have a wine. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs>